Welcome back to Vanover Customs. I hope you guys have been following along with the Miata build. Everything's just about wrapped up, but we do have one last project. We're gonna be making some external bash bars that go on the outside of the bumpers. Uh, I do live in the city, and unfortunately, I know this thing is gonna get damaged, just parallel parking and whatnot. So I wanna make some bash bars that are gonna minimize that damage. We're gonna be working on the lathe, maybe the mill, and even doing some welding. Let's get this project started. I got the bumper removed just to make this easier to visualize, but what we're gonna be doing is attaching this bumper directly to the frame via the tow hook mounting points. Most cars have a spot like this on the front and on the rear to attach a tow hook. We're actually gonna add two more spots, and then we're gonna create some standoffs over on the lathe and then attach the bumper to that. What that's gonna do is allow us to have good strength because the bumper comes right through to the frame, but also we'll be able to unscrew everything and take it off and make it go back to factory really nice and easily if we need to. I went ahead and marked the location of this hole on the rear bumper. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get this drilled out. It's a little bit easier to do this with this on the car. Uh, once we drill through, we're actually gonna put like an indentation on the bumper bar behind. That way we have an accurate spot to drill. With the bumper removed, we now have access to this crash beam here. This is the mark that we made with the drill bit. This is what we're gonna use to center off uh, and make our threaded spacer. If you come around, take a look over on this side here, you can see we have the factory tow point. That's what we're gonna be adding to the other side. This is an aluminum crash beam. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go over and turn that spacer on the lathe and thread it and then come back put a hole in this and uh, TIG weld it onto the bumper. We're gonna be making this bung or spacer out of some 6061 aluminum. Uh, this is definitely way oversized, so we're gonna turn this guy down and we're gonna thread and tap this for M22.5. For the next operation, we're gonna be using a Mari tool, ER32 floating tap holder. M22.5 tap in this ER32 collet. Let's get this guy tightened up. In reverse. For this project, this will be fine. We're just going to test fit our tow hook, make sure the threads line up, and they do.
Now I'm going to go ahead and try to turn this diameter down to one inch exactly, plus or minus two thousandths, mostly minus. I'm going to take a reading with the digital micrometer and see where we're at. All right, so we need to take off 492 thousandths. All right, let's see how we did. We can be a little under. Over probably would be fine, maybe like a thousandth. Oh, look at that. Dead nuts. Perfect, we'll take it. Now we're gonna flip this guy back over so we can take off this last little bit right here and go from there. I'm gonna go ahead and use a parting blade here just to bring this surface down. Ideally, you wouldn't do this in this operation, uh, but just for what I'm doing, it'll work fine. All right, we got this part finished. This is what I would call quick and dirty lay the work here. I don't care about surface finish. Um, I don't really care about much here. Uh, all I really need is to make sure this outer diameter is one inch um, and it can be plus or minus a thousandths um, and really just that the threads match up. Other than that, you're never gonna see this. It's gonna be buried inside of the crash beam and this ridge here is going to be filled with weld um, but yeah, that's our insert bung tapped uh, M20 2.5. All right, real quick, I just want to talk about the setup. I've got an annular cutter over here on the mill. We have this crash beam mounted up. I have it clamped down. What I'm going to do is go ahead and drill this one inch hole with this annular cutter, uh, and that's going to allow us the ability to slide our uh, bung into that hole. All right, we got this guy welded up. It's not the prettiest weld in the world, but that's large part due to this unknown metal uh, and its weldability. Um, but this will work perfectly for our application. And honestly, this looks about the same as the factory weld.
All right, we need to turn this down an inch and a half back and down to 780 thousandths so we can thread it for M22.5. Next, we're going to drill a 2764 hole in the end of this stud, and I want to just quickly talk about chuck options. So I really like, if I can get these out here, I really like these Albrecht style keyless chucks. I've got one of these here that's good to uh, 3 8 and then I got another one here that is good from half to 5 8 Those really work well. I like to use them for smaller drilling. Um, something where I'm doing probably a half inch or larger, I'm going to use something like this. This is a Jacobs. 16 in basically these uh, keyed chucks are going to offer a little bit more grip not quite as convenient But you can never go wrong using one of these and the Jacobs super chucks They give a little bit more torque uh, and just tend to work out really nice for this one I'm not going to be doing any piloting. These are split point drill bits. So we're just going to use this Jacobs super chuck and we're going to put this drill bit in here and tighten this guy down and because it is a less than a half inch and it is a split point bit we should be fine without pre-drilling this I got you zoomed in here and we're ready to do the tapping it's a half 13 Cleveland spiral flute tap I find that you really need to use a high quality tap or else you'll just have problems breaking. We're gonna lube this up with some anchor lube. You could use pretty much anything. I just like the color of it and I'm trying it out. I'm gonna go ahead and shift my lathe here into slow gear and we'll put it in forward and get going.
Now we will reverse out. All right, I don't know if you can see those threads, but they turned out really, really nice. And that was pretty dang quick. Let's just talk about this setup here real quickly. I got the part chucked up in the grind all jig. I have a DIY center uh, chucked up in an ER40 collet block just to add some tail support. And we're gonna go ahead and mill six flats on this part just to help able to install it and uninstall it on the vehicle with a wrench. Perfect. There's a little bit of movement in there, which is good. I want to leave some room for powder coat uh, because it is going to get a little bit thicker. Other than that, we're ready to go. Now that we got these spacers done, it's time to move on to the front bars. We're gonna be making out of this one inch round bar. It's hot rolled, you seen me earlier. Go ahead and strip the hot roll scale off using the muriatic acid in these pipes here. Uh, it's been sitting on the floor for about a week so it's pretty rusted, but that shouldn't be an issue. We'll get it cleaned up. The first step is gonna be taking these over to the roll bender and trying to get a radius on these guys. That way we can match the bumper and then if we need to do any 90 degree bends or anything of that sort, we'll take it from there.
finally got the parts back from powder coating. We're gonna go ahead and get these standoffs unwrapped. All right, check that out, looks pretty nice. All right, let's get these guys installed on the bumper. Number two. All right, let's get this bad boy installed. Well guys, thank you so much for sticking with the build process. I'm really happy I decided to go and powder coat these bumpers. It really did add that last touch of professionalism and give it that durability which it will need being outside. Uh, more importantly, I think these bumpers are gonna work functionally and just keep me from destroying the front and rear bumper parking. Um, and I really just excited that we got them done and they turned out great. Uh, if you guys have any questions, post them down below and uh, we'll see you in the next one, thanks.